So then uh, Nino calls me again. He goes, you need to come to the office. You need to come to the office. I'm like, all right, cool. So I go to Interscope because Nino and I are really good friends, sure. man. So you need to come to the office. We're going up to Jimmy Iovine's office. So I'm like, oh, God, here we go. You know, you know something like that. Uh, oh, I forgot one, one little thing. So when, when after that performance, I said, we need to do a show. Like, we need it to be just Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg. Right. And he's like, well, you know, where are we going to do it? We can't do it in L.A. No venue will ensure that. You know, no venue will take a West Coast gangster rap show like that. You're never going to get Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre in a venue in L.A. Right. It's, and we don't have a current single, you know, the right. da, 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 da. I'm like, well, you know, you're can make an album, you know, da 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 da. So, you know, Dre sneaks over and starts making a song with the Master Pete thing, all this kind of thing. And I'm like, this is probably No Limit Top Dog era? Uh, Second No Limit album? I think. Because the first No Limit album. Dre wasn't on it. Well, yeah, well, it was, it, it like, they were talking like, about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and he started recording. Because Bitch Please 2 was on Well, Top Dog. I'm trying to remember well, this. Bitch that first Snoop Dogg album on No Limit, I, I was not a fan. Yeah, but it was kind of like the conversation was starting. So, no, you know, maybe there was some sessions. Maybe there wasn't. And then the road to 2001 happens. Well, yeah. <laughs> so then it was, let's do a show. Right. Like, let's let's get this together. And Dre is like... All right, I'll fucking do it. Right. And I'm like, Snoop, what do you think? He's like, All right, I'll fucking do it. And then I go to the, and then we go around, we can't get nobody to do it. So, it's not a venue. Right. right. So I'm like, Just hang out. We're going to do this, this, this Puffy in Paradise show in, in Hawaii. If, if it, the Baker Boys came up with that idea, if we do it in Hawaii, then maybe we can fly the the winners to Hawaii like we did with this, and then we can skate past the whole venue thing right. and just do it in Hawaii. So then they're like, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do that. Well, when Dre cut the promos, Snoop cuts the promos, I go on the air with it, Jimmy Iovine calls me. And he's like, bro, what are you doing? And I'm like, Jimmy Iovine? Uh, hi? Hi? Like you're Jimmy Iovine. Yeah. And he goes, bro, he goes, I have a bill on my desk for $250,000. Thank you, Nino. Um, for a promotion in Hawaii that I'm hearing on the radio that has a producer that doesn't produce and an artist that I haven't seen since death row. And how the fuck did you get Dr. Dre's number? I don't even have it. Like I'm trying to sell this label, ba 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 ba. Like, and I, I mean, the rumor was that he was going to sell Aftermath mm. because of After the Firm and and the Aftermath and, album and the Aftermath album. So yeah. it was kind of like, and he and I was like, look, bro, you'll get your album. Yeah, I trust me. Like you're gonna get it. I've been to the studio. I know he's working on something. You know, it was the early stages of Melman and all of that kind of right. stuff. And just trust me, you're going to get it. And he goes, well, if this doesn't happen, I'm going to sue you for the 250 grand. But go ahead and do it. And then I get a call from Dre saying, you need to come to the house. And I was like, what? And we're in the middle of all this. You know, like, right. it's all the happening. Emotions already on the air. And-, and he goes, you need to come to the house. And I'm like, like, I know where you live. You think I'm a fucking stalker? Like, when, you yeah. know, whatever. So I end up coming to the house. I walk in, and there's this little white kid in the booth going, Slim Shady, you a bass head. Why your face red? And I was like, oh, wait a minute. He's writing for you? And he goes, uh, let me talk to you outside for a second. And I'm like, what? And he goes, let me talk to you outside for a second. I'm like, oh, no. You signed the white boy? And he goes, how do I break the white kid? And I was like, haven't you ever heard of Vanilla Ice? And he goes, bro, how do I break the white kid? And I was like, all right, I'll tell you what. You tell me the story of NWA from beginning to end, and I want to know everything from the world-class wrecking crew, Lonzo, what the room was like when Easy e did freaking Boys in the Hood, when Cube wrote it, who wrote this, who did that, what happened with DOC, blah, 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 blah. He goes, dude, you got all night? I was like, yeah, I do. And he's like, 
All right. So he said, I sat on his washer and dryer. He sat on his stairs and he proceeded to tell me the entire story of NWA from world class wrecking crew and all and Warren and the house and, you know, Jinx and, you know, everything up until that point. About six o'clock in the morning, M comes out and goes, look, guys. I'm going home. I've been sitting here for hours. Y'all been telling these stories. I, I'm out of here. I said, no, you're going to the Baker Boys show, and you're going to announce that you're doing the Friday Night Flavors 10-year anniversary, and we're going to break that record. He goes, the record's not ready yet. So, well, at least go do the show, set it up, and we'll talk about this later when you have the record. Yeah. And he was like, cool. So then we added M to the show in Hawaii. Crazy. So then M cut all the all the drops, and we added M to it. Dropped "Hi, My Name Is." So this was before "Hi, My Name Is." You already added him, to right? The show. So well, we did it right as we dropped "Hi, My okay. Name Is," because you really have to remember MTV, for all intents and purposes, broke Eminem for sure. You know what I mean? So, you know, and I remember this one story. M came in my office. M called me up. And I mean, was, shout out to uh, Sway and Tech who had him. Oh on. no, uh, the early. I mean, had him on. You know. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. The I mean. Sway and Tech and the Wake Up Show, yeah. all of that. But they I'm saying, but, but, but Hi, My Name Is yeah, was broken. Hi, My Name You know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Which as far changed, as that goes. Which made us know who he yeah. is. Yeah, so shout out Sway and Tech. No disrespect. Right. You know, I love those guys. Um, but he, they're getting ready to drop Hi, My Name Is. And, you know, M used to call me a lot, like, what's this mean? What's that mean? You know, come to the studio and listen to this. Or, you know, Dre, all of them did. So M calls me up. He goes, yo, can I stop by the office? I was like, yeah. I was like, fuck's going on and shows up he's like yo what's a buzz clip and i'm like what do you mean and he's like what's a buzz clip i mean everybody's so excited at the office they're all saying congratulations mm -hmm. and shit and that mean i said oh dude that's hot rotation at mtv you're about to become a mega star so if you want to go take your daughter to taco bell or mcdonald's or whatever the hell you want to do, do right now. now do it now because tomorrow morning you're not going to be able to go anywhere and he's like and he had this half look of like, wow, I made it. And half kind of like, wait a minute, what is that? Wait, I can't go out in public anymore? Right. Like, wait. And then he was like, yeah, cool. And he leaves, right? The next morning, M was everywhere. And I get the record. Hot 97, or, or uh, MTV, just national. You know what I mean? So we broke it at the same time that they broke it on MTV. They, they literally did it at the same time. So then we had him do the drops. I called him back and said, get back over here. We're we'll adding him to the show, do the drops. And that was the Chronic 2001 tour. So when they got done with the that Hawaii show, crazy. well, but check this out. So they, and this is how synergy works. Okay. This is why I always say consistency and repetition breeds familiarity. Familiarity breeds a relationship. A relationship breeds teamwork or synergy and synergy teamwork wins games so we add him to the show right then dre after the show calls me up and says we want to take this on the road but no venue will take us across the country so hawaii was kind of the the break the, the test run the test run of what ended up being the up and smoke tour yeah yeah which i fucking i remember i i man i've worked so hard as like a 12 year old kid or however old i was <laughs> To get the money to go to the warehouse and buy those tickets. Yeah. And it sucks because the date I went to in Phoenix, Ice Cube wasn't on the tour. Oh, he wasn't on the... But that shit was crazy. Devin, dude, it was... Dude, came dude out imagine exhibit. being... Wait, but watch this. Imagine in Hawaii. It's 250 people. Okay? That's it? Yeah, that's it. In a hotel ballroom. So 250 people got to see Eminem, Dre, and Snoop in Hawaii. Yeah. What the fuck? Exclusive content for Power 106. 